All right, so when you first open Twine, you are going to see the story library, which is going to have all these weird looking thumbnails for the various stories that you can create. Obviously, yours should be blank if you've never done this before. Now over here is the big green button that will allow us to create a new story, but before we do that, I want to point out a few other things here. First of all, down at the very bottom are two toggle buttons that allow for light mode and dark mode. I think dark mode is a little bit easier on the eyes, so I'm going to keep it at that. And then up here, we have import from file. So what this will allow you to do is take another Twine story, provided it is all complete, and import it into your own Twine. Then when you do that, you can actually open it up and you can look at it. Uh, this is very useful for learning from other games, and I will provide the files at the end of this series so that you can do it, although hopefully this will all work out for you at the end and you will have a complete copy anyway. And then finally, I want to look at this formats. Now, the formats are basically different interfaces and different scripting types for Twine. Uh, by default, it utilizes Harlow, which is a very simplistic uh, format to use and is pretty appropriate for creating uh, something as simple like a choose-your-own-adventure game. For this series, however, we'll be using Sugarcube, which is just a little bit more robust and uh, offers some more options. So select whatever the latest version is on the uh, download that you have. And I want to mention that you can change this once you get into the story itself. If you change it out here, this basically sets it as your default for all future stories. So let's close that, and we will now create a new story. So, since it's spooky time, I feel it's kind of appropriate to have maybe a Halloween-themed game to play, and uh, I've chosen to make it inspired by the H.P. Lovecraft story, The Outsider. So, we're going to call this The Outsider, and it brings us into it right away. Now, if you didn't choose your format before you created this story, uh, you can come down here to the title, click the arrow, and then select Change Story Format, and then you can change it from there. It is very important that you select a format and stick with it, because they are not compatible with each other, which means that if you change your mind and you try and change it uh, halfway through making the game, uh, it's going to break a lot of things. And then right beside it is this little house icon. It will take you back to the story library, and uh, you can create or modify or delete other stories from there. So when you've opened this up, the first thing you will see is this little passage block here. And if you double-click it, you'll see that you can change the title of the passage, you can add tags, and here you can add all of the text and formatting and scripting. Now typically in interactive fiction like a choose-your-own-adventure game, the story path is going to be pretty linear, but branch off based upon player decisions, ultimately delivering them to an ending based upon those decisions. For this game, I want it to be more like a text-based adventure game, where there are going to be multiple locations you can go to and uh, find items to solve various puzzles. And to that end, I find that it is helpful to sort of already have a roadmap ahead of time before making the game. So the premise of this game is going to be that it takes place in a cemetery, the player wakes up in a crypt, uh, they have to travel around, find some items to be able to open the locked gates of the cemetery, and ultimately leave. So the first location that we should create, then, as our starting point, will be the crypt. Now this title is only going to show up out here in the viewer, and this will not show up as the title that a player will see. So instead for that, we need to come down here, double-click this part to edit this, and I'm going to say we will be inside a crypt. So right now we're going to focus purely on all of the text and set up the basic framework for the game, and then we'll worry about all the formatting and such like later. So the character is trapped inside a crypt. Obviously, they want to get out. So now we need to create another location that will allow them to leave the crypt. And the way we're going to do that is by basically creating a link. So we're going to come down a few lines, and we're going to use the bracket key, left bracket key twice, then say outside, and then right bracket key. So this is the formatting that creates a link, but it also does something else. If we close this, we see that a new passage has been created with the title the same as inside that link. So why don't we go ahead and double click this passage and now we're going to say outside the crypt. Okay, so let's close that and we can go ahead and test this game right now, but before we do I want to point something out. You'll see between these passages there is now an arrow and it is pointing from the crypt to the outside and obviously that is because we have linked from the crypt 
to the outside, but that arrow indicates that it is a one-way link. If we wanted the player, once they get to the outside, to be able to go back into the crypt, we would have to create a link in this passage that says crypt, and then they would go back here. Of course, it would have to be inside that bracket formatting. Uh, I don't want the player to be able to do that, however, and we'll set up the text that will say so. So for right now, let's just come down to here in the bottom right and hit play. And what this will do is it will open up the game inside of your default web browser. So we can see here that we have inside a crypt. If we click outside, it now takes us to the outside the crypt location. So let's go ahead and close that. Now, this outside the crypt is actually what I want to be the central part of the map. Now you'll notice something here. On the starting passage block, we have this little green spaceship looking icon, and that is indicating which of the passages your game will start on. I would like the outside crypt passage to be the center of the map, but I want players to start in the crypt. If I changed my mind on that, what I could do, hovering over the outside the crypt passage, I could come over here to the ellipses and say start story here, and then it would move it down here. But obviously I don't want that, so we're going to leave it there. And just as a little bit of a cleanup, I want to move these passages around a little bit so that they are a little bit easier to see where uh, the outside, the crypt, will be centered on the map. And there's another thing we can do here. If I come back down to the outsider title and set, select Snap to Grid, I can then move these around and they will be nicely spaced around the grid here. So according to my planning map, the crypt will be in the center of the map. We're going to only allow the player to go north, east, south, and west. We're not going to be doing diagonals. So now we need to create those passages that the player can go from the crypt. So let's reopen the passage editor here, come down, and we're going to say north, east, south, and west. And now if we close that, you'll see all of those passages have been created. To keep things in line with the map, I'm going to go ahead and move north to the north, east off to the east, south to the south, and west off to the west. Keep them somewhat relative spacing. Now, I don't actually want these passages to have the names north, east, south, and west. I actually want them to be more descriptive of the locations that they actually are. So if I come back into the central passage here, I can change the name. Up in the north, what I actually want is a fountain. Now there's a problem with doing it this way, however. If we close this passage real quick, we can see that a new passage has been created. This north passage has been disconnected. If you want to rename a passage properly, you should do it from the destination passage instead of the origin passage. So let's actually look at the east one here. In the east, I actually want the main gate. So I'm going to open this one, and I'm going to type gate. We'll close it, and now you can see back here, automatically changed east into gate in the origin passage. So since this is just dangling here, I'm going to go ahead and delete the north passage. We're going to move fountain up into the north. And we have another issue. Again, we see that the arrows are only going in one direction, but we want players to be able to go between all of these locations, which means that I've got to open up Fountain, double-click this, and provide the outside link. And if you just click these uh, tooltips that pop up, or hit Enter when they pop up, it finishes the link out for you. And so now you can see that there is an arrow going both ways, and if we actually test this, we see that we start inside the crypt, we go outside, we can go up to the fountain, and we can come back down to the outside of the crypt. So now, unfortunately, one of the tedious parts of the game is setting up the map by creating all these different passages, so I'll come back when that is done. Okay, that's finally done, and you can see I have connected all of the various passages with the appropriate links, and I've given each of them just the barest minimum description of what they are so that the player can figure out where they are. Uh, so let's go ahead and play this game. And we start out inside the crypt, and we're outside the crypt. We can go up to the fountain, we can go to the graves, we can go to the gate. Uh, as you can see, it works, but it's a little confusing. Uh, we don't have any sense of direction unless we started writing down the maps. I mean, we have no idea where the graves and cottage are, and what is outside? What does that mean? So obviously we can be a lot more descriptive, and in fact we can incorporate 
the links themselves into the description. And I think we will take a look at that in the next episode.